Hello again. Uh, now I'm going to move on to a subject which is, uh, I'm sure, one that you want to know about, which is addiction itself. You may recognise that that's a major issue for you in your smoking. And what I'm going to be telling you is information you probably won't have come across before. Um, it was done by Dr. Richard Mackinnis at Basingstoke District General Hospital many years ago. Uh, it's work that's not been used, unfortunately, although he was an NHS consultant, it's not been used by the NHS because that's, that's been overtaken by drug products that they now use. Um, but Dr. Mack brought from America some very, very interesting ideas about how addiction works, that it starts in the immune system, not in brain chemistry. This is quite revolutionary. And it has turned out to be absolutely true. It's been proved over the last 30 years since he formulated these ideas that it's absolutely correct. We know it has to be correct because Dr. Mack formulated a way to stop people being addicted to nicotine or any other substance, which worked 100% of the time. I know it's not used by the NHS and uh, uh, that's unfortunate, but the fact that the treatment that he developed works and stops people being addicted proves that his theories had to all be completely correct. Now, what he was saying, this is the work that the, we at the Institute have further developed, what he was saying is that whereas a lot of doctors talk about addiction as if it was psychological. They, they even talk about, well, there's, there's physical addiction and there's, then there's psychological addiction. That's completely untrue. Addiction cannot be psychological. It does not occur in the mind. What Dr. Mack learned was that addiction is created when the body has to, is forced to learn how to absorb poisons. Let me explain. You understand that tobacco smoke is poisonous. There are, in fact, 4,850 poisons in tobacco smoke. Hey, don't ask me how we know that and what they all are, but we know some of them, and um, that's what doctors say. It's a lot. It's very, very poisonous. You may remember the first time you ever smoked. I do. Uh, that was um, an awful long time ago. I'm not going to tell you. Well, let's say it was over 40 years ago. And... Um, I remember what it was like, and I want you to try and remember now what it was like. You remember, do you remember the first cigarette, the first ever cigarette, or even the first cigarettes after maybe you'd been stopped for a while in later years, you know, you'd stopped for months or years and went back to it. Um, can you remember the taste of that one? Now, if I'm right, you're going to say it was horrible. It was tasted bad, it was no made you nauseous, it made you dizzy. Same with me. We all fell for it, we didn't like it, so what did we do? We lit another one. And our brain was saying we wanted to do it again even though it tasted bad. It's really clever that, isn't it? Um, and so we forced ourselves to smoke. And what we did, we forced the immune system to accept those poisons and to learn about them. Right, here are the poisons coming in. You're smoking a cigarette, nearly 5,000 poisons coming into your body, Here's your immune system, which is saying, do I understand this? That's its job, to say, do I understand this invader? And the immune system is saying, in this case, no, don't know what this is, so I'm going to make you feel bad about it. Nauseous and dizzy and so on. And so the brain says, oh, didn't like that, but I'd better try it again. That happens particularly when you start smoking again. You may remember that. Oh, this is supposed to taste nicer. I better try it again. So what you do is you smoke again and the toxins come in and the immune system says, I thought I told you I don't understand this. And you keep doing it and eventually you overwhelm the immune system. It says, okay, if you insist, you know, I'm either going to do this or die. And actually you don't die when you start smoking. Dying from smoking is actually quite a slow process. So here you are, your immune system now is being forced to learn the chemical structure of tobacco smoke. So now when you smoke, you might be smoking now for all I know, hope not, but um, you might, when you smoke, you might know that it, you do know, it doesn't taste bad, does it? It's, it used to taste bad when you first started, now it doesn't. And that's because your immune system is actually reading these chemicals. It's saying, that's nicotine. I've already got that, so I understand it. That's formaldehyde. Got that, understand, that's carbon monoxide. 
that's polonium 210 and so on. I don't know what polonium 210 is, but it's, I can tell you, it's, it's something from the nuclear industry that gets absorbed in, through the soil into tobacco plants. Um, nasty stuff. Anyway, it's in the cigarettes you smoke. And so anyway, you've got all these chemicals coming in and your immune system says, I can do that because I understand it. You've gone from being what we call in medical terms unadapted to being adapted. You can absorb those poisons. Sadly, it doesn't stop you being poisoned by them. It doesn't stop the substances being poisoned. It just stops your body recognizing that they're poisons. That's a very, very dangerous thing to do. That's what we call adaptation. And you're now on the way to being addicted. When that happens, when because you're adapted, you can smoke, because you're still under social and psychological pressure to keep smoking, well, you do. There's no reason now not to. It's not making you feel sick. So you keep smoking. And gradually, the immune system switches. It goes from being your protector, your lifesaver, to being something that's now going to kill you because you've thrown it into reverse. You've insisted that it learns to be poisoned without telling you. And the only way it can do that is now it has to keep seeing the poisons. It has to tell you, I need nicotine, I need formaldehyde and all the other things as well. And it does that so that it doesn't forget how to absorb them. It doesn't lose its adaptation because it thinks you want to do that. So, of course, it communicates with the part of your body that is going to help it get those substances, which is your brain. So it's sending a signal to your brain. And if you're smoking 20 a day, 20 times a day, your immune system is sending a signal to your brain to say, feed me with these substances. Your immune system doesn't know where to get them. Your brain does. Your brain provides it with a cigarette. Smoke goes in. Immune system says, thank you. That's fine. So what you've done now is you've reversed everything and you've created withdrawal symptoms. This creates, if your brain is saying, I'm not going to smoke, I'm not going to respond to these signals of craving because I'm trying to stop, you're going to have withdrawal symptoms like hunger. Hunger is in fact a withdrawal symptom. It's withdrawal from food. Thirst is a withdrawal symptom from fluids. Your body's supposed to have these mechanisms, you see, and you've developed a third one, withdrawal from tobacco. That's where you're up to now. And that, in fact, uh, I did mention Dr. Mack's work with uh, addiction. He developed a technique called addiction neutralization therapy, which um, involves taking a, an isopathic dilution of tobacco and feeding it back to the body as what he called a vaccine is correctly, in fact, now called a neutrogen. And that, in 100% of cases, stops people being addicted. Unfortunately, I don't know why I'm telling you about it, because you can't get it, because the NHS will not back it. Um, the Institute, in fact, has developed that, and we don't have the funding to provide it nationally. Um, so unless you happen to live anywhere near Brighton, uh, it's not yet available. But we are, I promise, um, uh, trying to create a national network of clinics where this treatment can be made available to people. Uh, watch this space. So that's how addiction works. Now you know probably more than your GP. But in the absence of the treatment that the Institute hopefully will be making available nationally uh, before too long, how can you treat addiction yourself, in yourself? Well, there are other ways. And we're going to be looking at those in another one of these videos. So, bye for now.